Hi, this video is about polynomials, cubic equation, and long division. In the first part of this question, show that p plus q is a factor of the expression of p cubed minus away 3p squared q plus 4q cubed. In the next part of this question, you are to factorize the same expression completely. And in the last part of this question, using both part 1 and part 2, solve the equation of m plus 2 cubed minus 3 times of m plus 2 squared multiplied by m minus 3 plus 4 times of n minus 3 cubed equals to 0. You might want to pause this video to give this question a try, and when you're ready, keep watching. In the first part of this question, we have to show that p plus q is a factor of this cubic expression. Now, there are a few ways of approaching this question. You can either use a long division or a factor theorem. We will be using a long division because if we are to use a factor theorem, it will be a bit confusing as this expression consists of two unknowns, p and q. So using a long division might be the easier way out. So let us first start off this question using the long division way. So first, we will write out our cubic expression in the dividends over here. Now notice for over here for our cubic expression, I've inserted a new term, which is a 0pq squared. Now this is absolutely necessary if you want to avoid making careless mistakes. So over here, now if you realize that we have a p to the power of 3, we have a p squared, we do not have a p to the power of 1, and it went straight to p to the power of 0 for the last term. For the first term, we have q to the power of 0, q to the power of 1, and we are missing a q to the power of 2 once again, and it went straight to the last term of q to the power of 3. So it is absolutely necessary if you want to avoid making careless mistake to insert this term over here. And over here, your divisor is a p plus q. Later on, you'll be writing your quotient over here. So the objective of this long division is to show that the remainder must be a 0, because whether you are using a factor theorem or a long division, so long as your remainder is a 0, we can indeed prove that this divisor over here is indeed a factor of this expression. So for long division, the idea of doing long division is to get rid term by term slowly. So first thing is we want to get rid of a p cube. And to do so, we need to multiply by a p squared over here. So p squared multiplied by p shall give us a p cube like this. So p squared multiplied by p shall give us a p cube p squared multiplied by q should give us a p squared q. So we take p cubed minus away p cubed, the p cubed is now gone. Negative 3 p squared q minus away p squared q should give us a negative 4 p squared q over here. Bring down the next term, which in this case is a 0 p q squared. So over here, we've got to ask ourselves, how do we get rid of a negative 4 p squared q? Consider the fact that this is the next term we want to get rid of. So, over here, we need to multiply by, in this case, a negative 4pq because negative 4pq multiplied by p shall actually give us a negative 4p squared q. Negative 4pq multiplied by q should actually give us a negative 4pq squared. Now, the first term is now being cancelled off because double negative is a positive. So, negative 4p squared q plus 4p squared q is gone. 0 minus minus is a positive against. So now you have a 4pq squared to get rid of for the next term. And you bring down 4q cubed. So the next thing to get rid of in this case is a 4pq squared. So how do we need to get rid of a 4pq squared from a p in this case? We have to multiply by a 4q squared. So 4q squared multiplied by p should give us a 4pq squared like this. 4q squared multiplied by q should give us a 4q cubed. Now, if you take these two terms minus with these two terms, you indeed have a remainder of a zero like this. So, since after dividing a p plus q, the remainder is indeed a zero, leaving us a quotient of this thing, we can rewrite this whole long division into this mathematical statement over here. So, p cubed minus with 3p squared q plus 4q cubed can be written as p plus q multiplied by the quotient over here which is p squared minus 4pq plus 4q squared. Now consider the fact that there is no remainder. We indeed show that p plus q is a factor of the cubic expression in the part 1 of this question. 
Moving on to the next part in part 2 of this question, whereby we are asked to factorize the same cubic expression completely. So to factorize this cubic expression completely will mean to say that we have to factorize this quadratic thing over here, which is a p squared minus 4pq plus 4q squared. So since they consist of p squared, q squared, and a middle term of a pq, we can tell that this is a quadratic expression. And for this quadratic expression, we can use a special algebraic identity over here, whereby a squared minus 2ab plus b squared can be factorized into open brackets a minus b close bracket square like this. So using this special algebraic identity, we can then factorize it into p plus q multiplied by open brackets p minus 2q close bracket squared. And that's the answer for part 2 of this question. Now, moving on to this part 3 of this question, whereby we are asked to solve these equations over here using the part 1 answer as well as the part 2. Consider the fact that for both part 1 and part 2, they are just a cubic expressions. We will want to set this cubic expression into a 0 over here, thereby forming equations. So setting this to be equal to 0 and trying to solve it over here from the part 2 answer. So setting this bracket to be equal to 0, p plus q equals 0, p equals to minus q, p minus 2q equals 0, p will therefore be equal to 2q. So now we have this part 1 and part 2 converted into an equation. Let us see over here. We can tell that this is somewhat in a form that is similar to this pq. So what I'm doing here is to use a substitution way of doing so. As you can see here, p, if you are to replace p to be an m plus 2, p to be an m plus 2, q to be an m minus 3, q to be an m minus 3, we do indeed get this form. And to solve this equation will mean to solve this cubic expression earlier that we had. That means to say to solve this part as well. So this is the whole general idea of solving part 3 of this question. So let us proceed by Proving that our suspicion is correct, replacing the p to be an m plus 2 and a q to be an m minus 3. So p to be an m plus 2 is highlighted in yellow for easy referencing. So p to be an m plus 2, p to be an m plus 2, q to be an m minus 3, q to be an m minus 3. So as you can see in this expression here, it is indeed expressed in the same equation as per the question over here. It is the exact same form. Therefore, to say that p is indeed equal to m plus 2, q is indeed equal to m minus 3. Now moving back to the previous step over here, whereby p we find to be equal to negative q, and p is also equal to 2q. Therefore, we can rewrite this into p equals negative q, so p highlighted in yellow equals negative of q, highlighted in greens. So m plus 2 equals negative of m minus 3, solving for m shall give us the first answer of half. And moving on to the next step, the other solution, if p is equal to 2q, so setting the p to be equal to 2q, so m plus 2 is equal to 2 times of m minus 3, solving for m shall give us an 8. So m equals to half or m equals to 8, and that's the answer for part 3 of this question. Did you manage to get the answer correct? Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something again, and see you in the next episode of Practical Math.